That's the infamous duty scene from the classic comedy Caddyshack, depicting a code brown at an upscale country club swimming pool. But there's a science to the unpooping of a pool. Let's explore. Perhaps you've already experienced a code brown at your local swimming pool this summer. Failing that, you have the Jaws-inspired exodus and Caddyshack to go by. Evacuation begets evacuation. But what happens after everyone leaves the pool? First, let's break down what's at stake every time a toddler darkens the waters. A massive outbreak of recreational water illness, or RWI. These are caused by organisms such as Cryptosporidium giardia and E. coli. You might have joined the local YMCA to shed a few pounds, but severe diarrhea is not the way to go about it. So when fecal incidents occur, it's everybody out of the water. There are two varieties of fecal incidents, formed fecal incidents and diarrheal fecal incident. I don't think these need much explanation, but to summarize, a formed incident is easier to isolate and clean up, while a diarrheal incident is a far more slippery situation. Plus, a diarrheal fecal incident will likely contain cryptosporidium, just another reason why every set of pool rules ever written implores diarrhea sufferers not to bring their evil here. As for cleaning up a fecal incident, Classic 80s comedies aren't the best source for proper pool maintenance info. Naturally, draining a large pool, scrubbing it down, and refilling it isn't the best option unless we're talking catastrophic levels of nastiness. Just draining and refilling a large pool will typically take well over a day to say nothing of the water cost. Instead, the preferred method is to shock the pool. And no, this doesn't mean a YMCA staff member chunks a toaster in and listens to a billion microbial voices suddenly cry out in terror. No, shocking a pool, or superchlorination involves cranking up the chlorine levels in the water till all the microbial nasties perish. Once they're dead, you let the chlorine level fall back down to swimmable levels. Then it's everybody back into the pool, except maybe that one kid. This works for both traditional chlorination systems and salt water chlorination systems, which simply uses a chlorine generator to derive its sanitizing agents from dissolved salt by electrolysis. Now how long you shock the pool and how high a chlorine level depends entirely on the type of fecal incident involved. For instance, the CDC recommends a chlorine level of three parts per million for a period of 19 minutes in the event of a formed stool incident. That kills 99.9% .9 of the Giardia. If it's a diarrheal fecal incident, however, they recommend 40 parts per million for 6.5 hours. And yet some establishments still do the drain and scrub measure. Not so much out of a need for hygienic cleanliness, but psychic cleanliness. And we can probably blame Bill Murray's Carl Spackler for setting the bar so high. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out these three videos as well. And don't forget to visit us at StuffToBlowYourMind.com. Your body is an astonishing wonderland capable of amazing things. It's also filled to the brim with repulsive, disgusting, just gross stuff. Hey Julie, is there a right way to poop? Maybe Robert, just maybe. Have you ever wondered why sometimes when you eat corn, it comes out looking exactly like it went in?